Hi, this is Eric. Just wanted to welcome you to the African Homestead YouTube page. This is my first vlog uh, ever, and so just uh, excited about what the future holds and uh, share what's going on here with, uh, with my family, with our journey here in Liberia, West Africa, as we homestead in the tropics, in the jungle. So I just wanted to welcome you and I uh, hope you enjoy the first vlog. Well, what I'd like to do is start off with giving you a quick tour of my garden here in the city and what we're planning to plant this coming dry season. Well, this is the garden plot that I have prepared. I actually had a rainy season garden here uh, over the last few months. The rainy season in Liberia starts in uh, mid-April and ends in mid-October. So here we are at the latter part of October and even though it's still, we still have some rain, um, it's really decreasing. It'll be over by the first week of December. And so this garden I actually had um, a little bit of luck with, a little bit of success during the rainy season. So during the rainy season we tried to plant quite a few different crops. Um, some cantaloupe, some watermelons, some zucchini. Uh, we tried corn, we tried a, a variety of things. And, and really the rain here, we get about 200 inches of rain every year annually. And most of that is during the rainy season, during a six month period. And so there's just a huge amount of rainfall. And so for uh, pollination, uh, it was a problem with all the rain and then also with um, just the, the crops just getting overwhelmed by the water. The, wa the soil here is very well drained, acidic soil. Um, so there wasn't really water logging, but it's just the quantity of water is overwhelming. And with that much rain, also it's a, a big problem with disease, a uh, big problem with uh, mildew and other, and other diseases. Pests are a big problem, they just thrive in that rain. And so we really came out with just a, a little bit of success in a, a few of the crops. One crop that did okay was the, uh, was the eggplant. And uh, we did lose probably about half of them to some type of wilt disease that also took out our tomatoes. But as we were just replanting during the rainy season, they uh, just tended to go ahead and grow. And you can see they, they did okay. They didn't get real big, but they did produce more than, uh, more than we wanted to eat. Another crop that did very well is uh, sweet potato greens. And in Liberia, these are not often grown for the, the purpose of eating the sweet potato tubers, but actually the greens are cooked and it's one of the, one of the staple soups in Liberia. And these do very well with lots of rain and we top dress uh, directly with pig manure, which really boosted, uh, boosted their growth during the rainy season there. Uh, with, a le with a drop in rain now, they're actually decreasing their, their rate of growth. So we're gonna be top dressing with some compost and uh, start manually watering them. This is what I call our papaya forest. And uh, we, we, this is actually only about half of them that we planted. And uh, they're doing pretty well. We have a couple of dwarf varieties here. And you, as you can see, they are starting to produce. Um, on the downside, it looks like that the, they've contracted some type of disease. Uh, with my research, it looks like it's a brown spot disease. But you can see it is, it is definitely spreading from one to the next, even though you know these are starting to bloom and uh, trying to trying to produce fruit. So I'm not sure we may end up losing the whole crop, but hopefully not. And then you can see I've interplanted with them because they're very fast growing. We do have some pineapple that we're growing here, and then also um, some tomatoes that we're growing in a in a rich compost. And uh, those again, the rain. Has been, has been a challenge in uh, having disease with the tomatoes. And also uh, the bugs are very hard on tomato plants in Liberia. One thing that I'm very happy about what, what we've been able to accomplish during the rainy season is, uh, is compost. And so um, this, these are wood chips, actually wood shavings from a local, a local wood mill where they build furniture. And there's not really any public service to 
um, haul away trash and that kind of stuff. So they just give it away for free. This is uh, actually rotted seaweed that I gathered off the beach. It comes in a handful of times during the rainy season in huge quantities. And so when, when that happens, we just go and, and rake it up off the beach as quickly as we can before it gets washed back out or buried in the sand. And so we use, uh, at this point, we're, I put together a four stage composting process. And so this is stage one and it's a mix of carbons. Um, the first two times I made it, I was able to incorporate some pig manure, but um, it's, it's hard to get that because the place where I could get it is about uh, I don't know, a 45 minute drive from here. And so the cost of spending the, the time and the fuel to drive out there and load it up is kind of high. So the last, uh, last two batches, I haven't used any manure other than rabbit and uh, goat manure. But this is just a mix. You can see we have some, some kitchen kitchen scraps in there. We utilize uh, the leaves, which um, really fall 24, or 24 hours a day, 12 months out of the year. And uh, we use that. We use the wood chips as our carbons. And then also we incorporate uh, banana plants. So the trunks of the banana trees, we'll chop those up. And uh, the other nitrogen we'll use are just or is the is the seaweed here, which is a great source. And so this is after about two weeks here, it'll go into stage two. And generally we keep these covered during the rainy season so they don't get drowned out. And then I just have a piece of uh, rebar sticking in there that that I check periodically to make sure it's still getting hot and it doesn't overheat. Overheating has not been a problem here. We had a little bit of a gap in production, so this is stage three, and then the final stage is stage four. And it goes into that bin, um, really in, in each section it spends about two weeks and then it's broken down fully. And uh, once it gets into this section, you know, it's ready to go on the garden. And uh, you know, you can see we've got some bugs here, have some worms. This stuff is really nice, really rich, smells great. And so uh, look forward to using that in the garden as we start out. Here we have the, uh, what they call the nursery that uh, we built out of bamboo and some scrap lumber you know again all of that is free and uh, this is from the first batch of compost i have some some uh, sweet peppers here that i'm starting out some more sweet peppers here you can see that's the carolina wonder these are from southern exposure seed exchange um, and then we have four varieties of tomatoes that we started here two two pepper variety or cherry varieties and uh, two that are kind of a mid-sized tomato. Um, all of those are said to do well in tropical environments, so we're hoping for the best. And then here's the, uh, the famous Liberian chili pepper. It's a super hot pepper. It's on the same level as a habanero, and uh, so it's really nice and hot. But unlike peppers, say like the habanero or the jalapeno, it doesn't really add a flavor to the food that we cook. This is actually one of the pepper plants that uh, that volunteered, and you can see it. Uh, it's small, but it does it does produce very well. And uh, unlike some peppers, they get sweet, like jalapenos. They get sweet when they turn red. These don't. These stay hot, whether they're green, orange, or red. One of the other things that that I grow here in my yard, and I'm going to be growing when we move up country, is moringa. Uh, this is called the miracle tree, and it's full of vitamins and minerals and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, what I was trying to do was doing some more intensive planting to where uh, after they get a couple feet high, cutting them off and, in hopes that they would kind of bush out a little bit and, and grow into something similar to a hedgerow. It hasn't really happened, but they do. You can see after I cut it off, they do come out. Here's one that I cut last week. And you can see it's already starting to produce some, some buds. And so uh, that these grow incredibly fast. Um, you know, this one is just, just a few months old and it's about six feet tall already. And so I'm gonna allow this one to go ahead and grow up so it'll start producing seeds and then I'll be able to use those seeds to transplant and grow some more Moringa when we move up country. And then here we have, it's kind of my pet project, um, our avocados in Liberia, they call them butter pears. And uh, I, I started these kind of the traditional way of putting them in a jar of uh, you know, sticking some toothpicks in them and growing them to start with a glass of water. And there's probably 
three different varieties here. You can see we are having some trouble with um, some kind of, they call it white fly here, but there's uh, some type of larvae that's it's been sucking the, the sap from the, from the tree. But uh, in all, we're gonna have probably about 10 by the time we're done. We're gonna take these up country where we're homesteading. This is actually a uh, kind of a trellis that we built to grow passion fruit. So we had a friend of ours who had some passion fruit in her yard, and so we just got a couple of the fruits and ate them and kept the seeds and, and started those on nursery. So we have a passion fruit plant growing up each leg of this trellis, and we actually ended up with a few more than we needed. And so we have uh, a few more that we planted to grow up this tree. One of the things I love about this place, you know, we're just renting it now. We've been here for a couple of years. We'll be here for about another uh, eight months is uh, just the trees. We have uh, palm trees, if you're familiar with palm oil, which is in just a, a huge number of products in, around the world that we have those palm nuts that we take the oil and we, and we um, cook and, and beat them, beat them in, a, in a mortar and make a, a dish, Liberian dish called palm butter. We have the cashew trees. We have actually up here is a cinnamon tree. We have a couple of avocado trees. We have the big trees there. Those are what they call plums, but they're, they're mangoes. We have, as you can see, coconut trees. We really enjoy the coconuts from those. So now that you have an idea of what uh, we've grown in the garden previously, I wanna just give you an idea of what we have planned for this growing season. So as everything's freezing, in the U.S. or getting cold in the south, southern U.S. Um, things are heating up here, the rain is stopping, and soon we're gonna be uh, full sun, 95 to 100 degrees every day. And so I'll just show you what, what we have planned in this area. In the back, we're going to have the sweet pepper, we're gonna have tomato. Um, over here, you can see I built a little bit of a, a trellis, and we're going to have two types of cucumber. Uh, one is a slicing cucumber, and the other one is for pickling. Uh, we are going to have some dill I'm going to try to grow. I did a test a, a test during the rainy season and it came up and it actually survived but it didn't really grow too big. And in this area over here uh, is mainly going to be uh, a Liberian pumpkin which is just a huge squash. Uh, as, you, as you see it's kind of a green and white striped uh, squash they call pumpkin here. And then we're also going to have a couple different kinds of watermelon and we're going to try a southern variety of cantaloupe or muskmelon in there. And then over in this area we have some sweet corn that we're going to be trialing. And um, I think that is about it except, oh yeah, some zucchini. We're going to try some zucchini here also. And so, you know, Liberia is a hot tropical environment. It's acidic soil. It's a lot different than what I'm used to in Kansas. And so we're going to be trying out a lot of different things and I think most of the time we're going to be failing and some of the time uh, we'll, we'll be succeeding and all of the time we're going to be learning and so uh, what we're trying here is just to try. We want to test out new things, we want to see what works, we want to see what doesn't work. We want to try out some, some North American or some Western techniques, there's some permaculture, some um, intensive gardening. Uh, there's another type that's called growing God's way or farming God's way and we're going to be trying that. We're also going to be utilizing uh, traditional Liberian techniques in farming and, and just trying everything and seeing what works. And, and, and with that, you know, growing wisdom and, uh, and hopefully here in a few years, we're going to be a lot better at what we do. And, uh, and so that's, that's what we're going to give a shot this year. Uh, by this time next year, we're going to be up in the jungle. We're going to have some land. We're going to be doing uh, some shade gardening in the jungle. Uh, we're going to be planting a variety of things. We're going to try coffee. We're going to try cocoa. Uh, we're going to try a lot of the Liberian crops. We're also going to try some some crops that we brought in, and uh, we're going to continue with our with our livestock expansion, trying a bunch of different things. But we're really excited about what the what the future holds here, and what we're going to learn about what what it is to to farm. Uh, and homestead in the tropics of West Africa. So that's my garden. That's uh, what we're growing here uh, as we live in the capital city of Monrovia. And so this is a completion of my first vlog on the African Homesteading YouTube channel. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, go ahead and click the subscribe uh, 
Yeah, this is uh, video number 00001. Hopefully a lot more to come as we continue to uh, make a, a way here in Liberia and move from the city of about 1.5 million people to a town deep in the jungle uh, of about a thousand people. We'll be living outside the town, but uh, that'll be the closest, the closest place to go buy any supplies. Other than that, we're gonna be off grid. We're going to be homesteading. We're gonna be starting really with just a jungle. That's all that's there right now. And so uh, I invite you to come and join us on the journey.